morning folks um just hanging around oh that sun's terrible just hanging around at the house this morning waiting for some building materials to turn up uh, i've been into work already it's a tip i'm planning on brewing next week as it happens but there is that much junk well it's not junk it's stock it's uh, pallets of materials beers the new tanks of course all this kind of stuff and it all needs kind of uh, a place to live. And on top of that, we've been given the great news, sarcastically, of a 240, I think it is, 240 pound per tonne price rise on grain on the 1st of January. So even though we don't have the space for it, I've decided to order a couple of tonnes. I've got a tonne in stock as it happens, which I haven't touched yet. I'm going to order another two tonnes, so we'll have three tonne in stock for the new year, and hopefully we'll get these at uh, the old prices, which is currently about 7.50 a tonne. It's going up to 9.90 or something like that. So that should help us. We'll save, a, save £400 there moving into the new year, and that should last us until, I would think, at least, at least March. We only use about... 75 kilos 80 kilos a batch so anywhere we can make any savings i guess because times are tough in the pub at the moment i mean i'm taking on this project of course we've uh, already budgeted for this and the kids need a bedroom because this is a two bed two bed um and terrace that's all we've lived in for the past 10 years and the kids share a bedroom which isn't ideal abigail's coming of age now as you say and uh she, she wants her own space, you know. So we're going to have to do this. But I am definitely... I'm just checking that's not the guy. I am definitely nervous that come the new year, we're going to find it very difficult um, to survive unless things dramatically change. Um, they've changed the business rates brackets as well. So it's probably a bit of a ranty video, I guess, while I'm stood here waiting. So yeah, they've changed the business rates brackets, which pushes us into a higher band of business rates, because we were entitled to business rates relief, because the bracket that we were on was so low. Um, but now we're up and into the variable rate of business rates relief. So next year, ultimately, we're going to have to find another £6,000 on top of quadrupled energy prices increased staff prices, increased cost of goods sold, so obviously all the food's gone up, price of beer obviously has gone up. So I don't think you're going to find anywhere in the UK with a viable business that isn't fiddling the tax man um, able to sell you a pint of beer for less than five quid a pint unless it is literally the twiggiest shite you can actually pull out of a beer pump. Particularly if you're a small micro like we are a little micro well we're not a micro pub but we're a small artisan restaurant if you like we don't have the support of <clears throat> tens or dozens of different outlets to keep us going like places such as spoons for instance so their business model is completely different to what we're doing and it shows in how difficult it is to run these things and the only way we can sort of uh, deal with these rising prices and costs is obviously pass it on to the customer there's no other way around it and of course then the customer's complaining that everything's expensive well get with the program boys and girls because everything is expensive and it ain't going to get any cheaper particularly after the new year so i'm expecting in the new year for uh, a lot of places to close down we're already seeing quite a few big breweries go. For instance, Dark Star has gone. Um, Fixed Wheel Brewery, I believe, has gone. Uh, and a dozen more, a dozen more, which I can't remember off the top of my head. And these are obviously, ultimately, down to the cost in price rises, but also a reduction in purchases from, from other pubs who are finding it difficult as well, so. They're going to be trying to source cheaper products to bring their margins back up a little bit. But it literally is the case of, you know, 
you put your hand in your pocket, this is what I've made. And after everybody's had their little bit, there's nothing left. That's the world that we're living in at the minute. Anyway, there's a five minute rant <laughs> for you. Uh, like I say, I'm waiting for this building materials to turn up, just some concrete blocks. I'll turn the camera around and show you. So we're getting some concrete blocks delivered so we can start getting the foundations on top of the foot in here. So double concrete block on the outside, double concrete block on the inside, then three courses of engineering brick when we get to that height. And then on this side, he wants me to build a retaining wall. So what I'm gonna do is I have single concrete block on the inside and then a double concrete block wall on the outside, but I'm just gonna lay the concrete blocks flat and build them up like that, if you know what I mean. So that's the plan. And then we'll run that along there and we'll go up to basically the height of this soil here, which is about 600 mil above damp proof. And uh, then we'll bring it back to engineering brick and then single skin brick and it'll just be um, single skin brick on the outside and um, 3.6 Newton lightweight concrete blocks on the inside and that'll take us all the way up all the way up to um, uh, what's it called wall plate height I guess so this is a 10 meter long run down here it doesn't see it doesn't look it but it is this is five meters across here then we've got 1.8 meters back to the wall six foot and then we're going out 2.4 meters in the back. I had another grab lorry come yesterday. He took away all of the path. So all this path that we dug out over the past few days, which was basically this type of concrete, about 80 mil, 100 mil thick in places. We piled all this up here. Again, he filled his lorry. His arm couldn't quite reach out here. So we know where his limit is, um, eight meters. But this is really good sand and stone, which I'm going to use as backfill and hardcore for when we've got that wall built and we put the floor in. So that's where we are now. Um, might grab a clip of the lorry unloading if the wagon driver's not too shy. But other than that, um, we'll be going back down to the brewery. Here he is. Here he is, folks. That's the driver gone. Wow. Just broken my back. Moved 80 bags of pale malt. This is what we've got. So it's uh, crushed extra pale planet. And this was, let's have a look packaged on the 20th of November so that should last us into hopefully March April I mean actually hopefully it's all gone by February because that means we're selling beer but I doubt it very much so um, today is Monday by the way uh, following on from that clip that you've just seen a moment ago where the um, blocks were delivered or was that a grab lorry I can't remember we've had that much good yeah it's the blocks being delivered so 80 sacks of pale malt or 2,000 kilograms to be more precise today we've got the vacant mashing in actually we're transferring at the moment but you get the gist and then I've just split into my third ton of grain so I've used three bags in the mash this morning we've got three bags down here for tomorrow's brew and that was a full stack of 40 um, before this morning so we actually have, or well we had three tons on site, 
which uh, I think is a first for us, not counting obviously all of our specialty malts down here and uh, we've got some more specialty malts in in the Martins mash tun and then we've got some well yeah look how busy it is in here that's dextrose which we've been using for priming there's all the canning equipment there are some Christmas beers uh, I've been really really rubbish with the website these past few months guys and I know I've not put all the recipes on there that I wanted to and all of the beers that we've got for sale I will get round to doing it at some point but uh, God I've just got so much going on and it's not like I can afford to get another member of staff in to do it so the weekend's trade you'll be interested to know after my little rant earlier on in the in the video was pretty good to be fair but is that gonna last I sincerely doubt it because we've only got maybe one or two more weekends until Christmas I think perhaps just one I'm not sure and of course uh, we've been knocked out of the World Cup so even though I know a lot of people who watch these videos aren't necessarily football fans what it does mean is that we're gonna see less trade off the back of that so one of the only benefits of the World Cup being in winter time was of course having a little bit more trade people coming out to watch it we don't really host it much we've only got the one TV downstairs in the in the pub but you could definitely see a spike on Saturday evening uh, likewise with the previous match so it does help and the fact that we're out does not bode well for trade particularly if you um, own a sports orientated bar I've got a friend who runs a pub around the corner not really competition for us because they just do run-of-the-mill stuff like Estrella Dam and Madri and all that kind of jazz Carlin whatever you like and uh, he has uh, seven or eight TVs up around the place uh, meaning that he is a sports bar a sports orientated bar and trade for him is gonna be awful now running up to Christmas so I do feel sorry for him and also over the weekend um, I saw some information on a brewers forum about uh, three more breweries going into liquidation or closing just due to lack of trade which is a real shame I thought we'd see pubs going first but it looks like some of the breweries just can't stomach the trading conditions as we run up to Christmas um, because November was probably so bad so keeping open during December is probably just throwing good money after bad money, which doesn't really make sense, does it, I suppose? But in all, there are dozens of breweries that have closed during 2022. And I think that in January and February of 2023, we're going to see just as many, if not more, uh, pubs, particularly small independent pubs, close their doors for probably the last time because it's going to be an absolute nightmare trading in the new year unless you have any capital reserve now we are slowly exhausting ours um give you an idea we made a six thousand pound loss in november we're on track to make uh, i think i might have mentioned it earlier on in the video 1700 loss already this month that may have got worse or better after this weekend's trading. I'll have to have a look. But it's not looking promising. There's only so many months that we can survive at those numbers. And I doubt January and February are going to be good ones. So I do feel for the industry out there. I mean, I got into it out of passion, not out of making money. But ultimately, you can't do something like this unless you are earning your daily bread, so to speak. So it's really important to have the business not only uh, something that's interesting for you but it has to be commercially viable as well I've just seen a spider dangling from the ceiling check this fella out you see him there he is look there's no flies in here for you this week he's probably moved off the roof because of the heat I've generated from unloading these because I was I was steaming at one point 
Anyway, before I sign off, I'm just going to nip upstairs into the office and I'm going to pull up a list of all these breweries and uh, I'll read them out to you before I go and see if you recognise any of them. And all I'll say is um, if you do have any local independent pubs or breweries near you, please go and spend some money in them in the new year and definitely over Christmas if indeed you can afford it. Wow, so this list is way more extensive than I th first thought it was. So, um, I'd just like to say uh, thanks to Matt Bean, um, who I don't actually know, but he's put this list together and uh, shared it online. Um, and he's the landlord at the Angel in Westbury, but there's also other references as well. If you want to go onto Facebook and search for the UK Beer and Brewing Professionals, also on there you will find um, quite a list of uh, breweries and lots of discussion about breweries closing down there. And also um, if you look for a chap called Nick Law, let's just have a look. He's from Sheffield, he's a brewer um, but he also runs a podcast called the Hop Forward Podcast. And um, a few days ago he released um, an episode with... Anthony Barrett of Twisted Wheel Brewing Company um, talking about what happens after your brewery ceases trading. And of course, many of you who followed my journey understands that I know that firsthand. It's not good, but it was completely different circumstances to how these guys have met their demise. And uh, yeah, well, I'll try and elaborate on a few things as we're reading out um, this obituary of breweries. So we'll start at the top with one that many people will know of. This is Kellam Island Brewery in Sheffield that closed recently, but the brand for Pale Rider and a few other things I think has now been bought up by um, a company including Thornbridge Brewery and it's being brewed at um, Thornbridge Hall, I believe. Another one that's gone is Beatniks Brewery, Swan Brewery, Woods Brewery, Cheshire Brewhouse, and that's Shane Swindles. I hope you're doing well, Shane, if you're watching, but, um, I know he had an health scare earlier on in the year and then he decided to get out of the business. Uh, Brew Mason, uh, West Horn Brewery, X Valley Brewery. So X Valley Brewery um, was home to uh, the ex Seba director. I forget his uh, I forget his name at the moment. Um, I met him a few times on quite a lot of the of the rounds. Um, Fallen or Fallon Brewery, I think they were up in Scotland. Three Castles Brewery, Crafty Beers Brewery, Cool Brewing, Truman's, CTZN, formerly Q Brewery, have gone. Enfield Brewery, Old Kent Road Brewery, Bad Co, uh, Mouselow Farm, Five Towns, Errant Brewery, Constellation Brewery, Nomadic Beers, Jefferson's, Prospect, Mighty Medicine, Jennings, Hop and Stagger, Skinners, Old Dairy, have administrators appointed, Steel Brew Co, Frisky Bear, One More Than Two, Framework, West End, Beat Brewery, Box Steam Brewery, Three Sods Brewery, George Wright Brewery, Chapeau Brewery, Rock Mill Brewery, Ride Brewing Company, Caledonian Brewery, Strathaven Ales, Wheel Ales, Dark Star, Top Out Brewery, I believe are going at the end of the year, unless they've already, I think they've decided to go, it's just what it says here, but I saw a post on the weekend that they're selling that kit. Canopy Brewery, and that says end of the year again. Wild Beer Company, um, it says administrators appointed. Whether they can get a deal out of this or not, I don't know. Twisted Wheel Brewery, Yeovil Ales, Withnills Brewery, Avid Brewery, Tapestry Brewery, Time Bank, bought out of administration. Slaters are going at the end of year. I've also heard that Slaters are just closing down until they become solvent again. I'm not sure about that. Burton Town Brewery this weekend, uh, Treblum Brewery, new owners and relocating to Wales, Hop Studio, which is a surprise to me, Emsworth Brewhouse, West Berkshire Brewery, 
one of the big ones, Wild Beer. Can you believe it? And then we've got Riverside Brewery. And uh, not all of these breweries will be closing down permanently. They might be um, negotiating terms with receivers or administrators and opening back up or changing hands. But they have ceased trading as of uh, the dates indicated there. So it's tough. It's a tough marketplace out there. And um, I don't think that's an extensive list by a long chalk. So hold on tight, boys and girls, because it's going to be a rough few months. So like I said, if you can, get out there and support your local independence. We'll wrap this one up. Cheers, guys. We'll see you on the next one. Back in a bitchery, isn't it?